So it's time for another episode of what the heck are all these buttons for? And today we're talking about the tape machine. So this is the Tascam MSR16. 16 because it has 16 individual tracks that you can record to. I believe this type of machine was available as a uh, 24 and 32. So this is a uh, half inch tape machine. The 24 I think was a inch, I think it was inch tape and the 32 would have been two inch. This particular machine I believe is a 1988, um, maybe an 89. It's, at the time, I think it was a bit controversial to be squeezing uh, 16 tracks onto half-inch tape. I don't think it had been done before. Um, there was another machine that was a uh, similar, similar setup to this one, which is the Fostex. Uh, the Fostex, though, tends to have lots of uh, plastic materials where we've got um, uh, aluminium or metal. Uh, a lot of this is actually uh, made out of metal. Um, and the Fostex, a lot of it's made out of plastic, so it didn't age quite as well as these uh, these Tascams. These are seriously heavy pieces of kit. So why use half-inch tape and squeeze 16 tracks on it? Well, it's cheaper. It was uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, and it's still cheaper now. It's readily available. We don't have uh, trouble with, um, with supply, but you are looking at uh, over £100 more, uh, or well over $100 more for... Uh, you know, two inch tape compared to uh, half inch tape. So let's go through some of the uh, buttons and features. Um, so we can arm each uh, track individually. In fact, that's one of the questions that I get asked the most is, can we just record uh, one thing at a time if we need to? Uh, yes, you can, you just arm the track you need and uh, go ahead recording on that one, doesn't record on any of the others, just like in your digital audio workstation. Um, so power, that's fairly straightforward. It turns it on and off, you've got your speed controls here. Um, essentially, the machine runs at two speeds, uh, seven and a half inches a second, which uh, would be low, and 15 inches a second, which would be high. Running at low speed, you're going to encounter more tape hiss, uh, so your quality, your audio fidelity is going to be um, slightly decreased. It's going to be increased at uh, the high speed. However, you are going to use a lot more tape, so on your typical tape reel, at high speed, um, we're getting, what are we getting, between 35 and 40 minutes per reel, I believe. Um, so that could be significantly increased if we ran it at low speed, but that would then increase the hiss. Uh, so we've got the DBX noise reduction built in on this uh, machine, so that reduces your hiss somewhat. It's uh, actually very effective, um, but does decrease your output slightly. Okay, so your edit, editing buttons, uh, edit essentially connects the tape head to the tape so that you can manually find an exact point on the tape that you want to edit. Maybe you want to do a spot erase or maybe you want to um, mark the tape with a china marker because you're going to be doing a cotton splice or something like that. Um, this just allows you very, very precise, um, very, very precise um, control over the tape. So you've got your meters here. You don't have to worry about them uh, so much going into the red like you do with digital, um, with analog, particularly with drums, uh, to hit it quite hard with a signal. Um, it can sound really good. So uh, yeah, it's not like uh, recording digitally where going into the red is a big no-no. Uh, then you've got your basic transport buttons. So these are fairly self-explanatory. You rewind, you stop, you fast forward, you play, you record. You've got to hold record down and press play to record. Um, your locate memory function, so you can save any point on the uh, track if there's a, a a point that the band has to keep coming back to. Um, you can just memory, you can uh, save those in the memories and uh, hit locate, and it'll go to those at any point. Uh, you've also got a rehearsal feature, so even the operator of the tape machine can, if you're, for example, going to be doing a drop in and just recording a certain part, you can run a rehearsal before you actually do a. Re uh, a recording so you can uh, check that you're getting that right before you do it because obviously when you're recording the tape there is no edit undo um, so you, you've got to get it right first time really otherwise you're going to be doing it again. On to another question that we get asked quite a lot with regards to editing is 
is it a lot more difficult? And to be honest, it's not really, it just takes a little bit longer. If you're in your digital audio workstation, yes, you can do copy paste and that can, you know, make your life a lot easier. Somewhat cheating, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so, you, you, I mean, we can do that. We can do editing. You can cut and splice the tape. Uh, obviously, these things do take longer when recording to tape. So uh, that is something that you have to bear in mind. But generally, recording to tape is more efficient. Um, the way we tend to do things here is to record the bulk of the instrumental all in one go. So we have the band play live uh, and just overdub things like vocals or second guitar tracks and things like that. And that makes recording much more efficient. You get a lot more done in one day than you would if you were recording in isolation to a click track. Why does recording analog sound better or particularly using tape? Is it the tape itself? Um, to answer that, uh, in a way, uh, yes and no. Um, I mean, there are artifacts that the recording to tape that you will get on the recording that you won't get recording digitally. Uh, obviously, the tape hiss, which some might say adds a bit of atmosphere. Um, and the uh, there's also a slight wobble uh, of the tape transport, which is, uh, you know, I mean, unique to um, each tape machine. Uh, so there is a, an almost imperceivable wobble on the sound, which uh, is naturally pleasing to the ear, it turns out, that you don't get on uh, on digital recordings. Um, there are plugins that try and replicate this kind of thing. Um, are they any good? They're okay. Uh, you don't generally get the uh, the tape sound. The tape sound is a combination of um, the hiss, the slight, almost imperceivable wobble, and uh, natural tape compression. So you do get recording the tape, a natural compression over everything, um, which uh, also sounds great, particularly with uh, regards to drums. Uh, they tend to sound um, a lot more punchy um, and a lot bigger when uh, when recorded to tape. Uh, as well, recording to tape um, in general, although obviously we can record uh, individually, this notion of recording uh, everything in isolation to a click track is relatively new in recording terms. It's come around in the last 20 years or so. So musicians, when they're playing together, when they can see each other, uh, you know, you get to a part of the song where maybe you will speed up or maybe you will play a little bit harder. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it sounds natural. Uh, it gives dynamics. It gives a performance aspect to it that you're just not going to get if you're recording in isolation to a click track. You know, you're just listening to the click track. Uh, you're trying to keep in time and also, you're not all going to keep in time exactly the same way when you're not playing together, even if you're playing to a click track. So uh, after the fact, uh, recording digitally, you're going to probably want to quantize or do some kind of snapping to the grid business where you're going to make it into an unnatural performance, where there is no performance, really, because the song wasn't performed. So, um, yeah, recording analogue. Uh, it's not just the uh, the aspects of the tape and the artifacts that that puts on a recording, although that is part of it. Um, it is also, uh, there's a great performance aspect to uh, recording analog. And if you're recording every, uh, the bulk of the instrumental all in one go, you'll, you'll find you'll get through uh, the songs a lot quicker um, with a well-rehearsed band. I mean, they can knock out uh, an album over, over a few days. So I think we covered um, the basics of analog tape recording at Gorilla Studios. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to put them down in the comments below and we will try and answer them for you.